Good evening, you're watching the news at 7.30 on ATV, I'm Anne Reeson. And I'm Edna Dare, here's a look at tonight's top stories. McDonald's apologises again for selling products with ingredients from factory at heart of tainted meat scandal. Activists angry after Marine Department dashes Delhi Island's protest voyage. Protesters rally against the bloodshed in Gaza as Israel resumes its attacks on Palestinians. The Hong Kong management of fast food giant McDonald's has publicly apologized for the controversy over its use of products from a U.S.-based mainland supplier at the center of a rotten meat scandal. The eatery's managing director admitted it had not communicated well with its customers but did not explain if the fast food giant knew it was selling tainted meat from Shanghai Husi. A week after a Shanghai television station blew the lid off China's worst food scandal in recent years, top executives from McDonald's finally faced the public over its use of expired and rotten meat from Shanghai Husi food. In a four-minute briefing this afternoon, Randy Lai, managing director of McDonald's Hong Kong, issued a second apology to the public. Lai admitted that McDonald's had not communicated well, which she claims led to confusion and anxiety among customers. But there appears to be little for customers to get confused about. The scandal broke last Sunday, but McDonald's waited until Thursday to apologize for not admitting from the start that it was supplied by Husi. That led to accusations that McDonald's knowingly sold tainted meat products from Husi, which is owned by the US-based OSI group. But Lai today avoided addressing lawmakers' accusations of a cover-up. During the announcement, the eatery said it had sealed off all ingredients imported from Husi's Hebei and Guangzhou bases, adding that it had completely stopped all imports from the supplier. This afternoon, one week after the story first broke, the fast food giant started providing all of its Husi-sourced ingredients to the government for food and hygiene inspectors to test. It will now start sourcing from the firm's global network of suppliers. McDonald's had initially denied using any food products from Husi's Shanghai factory, which is accused of reprocessing and repackaging meat that was past its sell-by date. But on Thursday night, after the government banned the import and sale of products from Husi, McDonald's performed a U-turn and pulled its McNuggets, chicken fillet burgers, corn cups, green salad, chicken salad and iced lemon tea off the Hong Kong menu. From next month, the fast food giant said it will resume using some vegetable ingredients, including lettuce and onions, that will come from the US and Taiwan. It had originally sourced vegetables from Husi's Guangzhou factory. McDonald's today promised to increase transparency by inviting the media to check out its operations once the majority of its ingredients were back on the menu. Still, despite the company's global reputation, its Hong Kong managing director refused to take any questions from the media and was hastily ushered out of the room. Meanwhile, Helena Wong, who chairs LegCo's food safety panel, criticized the government's food monitoring laws, saying they're too lax because they don't cover the importation of cooked meat products. Currently, permission is only needed from the Food and Environmental Hygiene Department to bring in raw meat. Wong suggested that the government introduce new rules where importers must notify authorities within 24 hours of discovering a problem with their food products. She also proposed increasing the maximum penalty to deter offenders. Wong added that she had originally wanted to schedule a LegCo meeting between food safety panel lawmakers and food and environmental hygiene department officials tomorrow to discuss how to tighten regulations on importing cooked meat products. But they can't meet in LegCo since there aren't enough lawmakers to fill the headcount during the summer recess. They will hold informal talks at government headquarters instead. In another twist, state media says Shanghai food regulators have found that Husi forged production dates on more products and sold them after they had passed their sell-by dates. Six batches of smoked meat patties were manufactured last year and had February 2014 expiry dates. But Husi repackaged around 4,000 of them as flavored meat patties and resold 3,000. Shanghai food regulators have confiscated the rest.
More government officials are signing the anti-Occupy Central petition after the chief executive declared his support for the campaign yesterday. Occupy Central organizers came out today to slam Lun Chunying for what he says is merely exercising his freedom of expression. Winner Wong reports. In an unexpected show of solidarity, Chief Executive Lun Chenying announced yesterday that he would be signing the anti-Occupy Central petition held by the Alliance for Peace and Democracy. It was also revealed that a number of government officials, including Health Chief Ko Wing Man, Development Secretary Paul Chan, and Treasury Under Secretary James Lau, have already signed and many more said through their publicists that they intend to. While the government insists it's a personal decision that does not break any rules, some are uncomfortable with the idea. I'm kind of not used to seeing government officials taking such a stand in um, indicating what sort of um, decision they intend to take. Um, I believe that, you know, there's a domain belongs to the government and there's also a big domain belongs to civil society. Convener of Occupy Central Benny Tai also slammed Leung for expressing his opinion, accusing him of poor political judgment for adding his name to the anti-campaign. Tai said even if anti-Occupy manages to gather more than 800,000 signatures, it doesn't mean the government can disregard the 700,000 physical votes his own unofficial referendum got. He also insisted Occupy Central is not illegal and questioned how Leung could not differentiate between civil disobedience and illegal activity. Meanwhile, the Alliance for Peace and Democracy's month-long anti-Occupy campaign has had a successful second weekend. When asked about officials openly supporting the campaign, the organizer said anyone is welcome to sign, regardless of their political party or stance, as long as they support the cause. We'll be talking to uh, Carrie Lam tomorrow, and I think we will still be getting, getting as, many, um, as many signatures as possible, and uh, we will decide what to do with the signatures. I, I don't think we will be asking her or asking the Hong Kong government to do anything in particular, but I think uh, the government should respect public opinion, especially opinion expressed in this way. Organizers say they have already reached their goal of over 800,000 signatures, beating the number of voters in Occupy Central's unofficial referendum. Winna Wong, ATV News. Activists from the Action Committee for Defending the Jiaoyu Islands have accused the Marine Department of overreacting to their fishing plans today. Marine Department officers inspected their boat and forbid them from sailing out of Hong Kong waters. More than 10 members of the Action Committee for Defending the Daeyu Islands were making last-minute preparations on the Haiphong 2 vessel this morning. They claimed they wanted to test the capabilities of the boat by going fishing and at the same time mark the 120th anniversary of the First Sino-Japanese War. But just as they thought things were going smoothly, Marine Department officers approached their vessel and carried out an inspection. The officers told the group that the boat can only sail in Hong Kong waters. The activists were frustrated with the orders and accused the department of overreacting and asked for more information on the boundary restriction. Activist Zhang Qinxing questioned why the government is barring them from sailing beyond Hong Kong waters because they have paid the license and insurance fees. They also shouted slogans criticizing the clampdown. In 2012, 12 activists and two journalists sailed on board the Haiphong 2 to the Daoyu Islands, which are claimed by China and Japan. Their journey made headlines when the vessel was rammed by Japanese Coast Guard boats. Last year, the activists planned another visit to the uninhabited rocks, but suffered a major setback when the Marine Department decided that the Haiphong 2 wasn't seaworthy. Customs officers say they have smashed a syndicate supplying copy textbooks after arresting four people and seizing fakes worth over half a million dollars. Thousands of the books were bought by the city's schools and parents over the past two months. Alison Chan reports. 
Customs officers showed off their haul today after seizing thousands of illegally copied textbooks. More than 7,400 suspected fake textbooks worth of 530,000 were confiscated. The seizure came after officers received a tip that a syndicate sold the copies to primary students through their schools earlier this week. They raided two bookshops and a warehouse in Yunnan and Moon on Thursday following the tip. Three men and a woman aged between 52 and 62 were arrested on suspicion of selling the illegal books. During the search, Custom also found some legitimate copies of textbooks in the bookstore and warehouse. It is believed that the syndicate deliberately sourced a certain amount of legitimate textbooks from the copyright owner in order to evade detection. Lee said book suppliers risk selling copy textbooks because they can earn twice as much money. The cost of producing this legitimate textbook is $70, while it only takes $20 to produce a counterfeit. He also demonstrated how to distinguish between the genuine and fake books. Barcodes and writings in the illegally copied books is usually blurry and less neat. Thirty-five primary schools and three publishers are said to be involved, but none of their names were reviewed. As most of the schools are still on uh, summer holidays, we are still locating the staff of the school to, uh, to low uh, the quantity of uh, students uh, who have bought the textbook from the bookstore. The department urged schools and parents to choose reliable suppliers when buying books. Alison Chan, ATV News. Protesters rallied in Wan Chai against Israel's military action in Gaza, which has killed more than a thousand Palestinians. This came as fighting resumed in the Gaza Strip, with Hamas militants ignoring Israel's extension of a ceasefire. Arthur Akaola reports. Israeli soldiers drove tanks back to the border with Gaza as a 12-hour truce ended and fighting resumed. Israel said Hamas militants had ignored a 24-hour ceasefire requested by the United Nations. The security cabinet approved extending the ceasefire. Hamas, which governs the region, said it would only accept the truce if Israeli troops left its territory. At least five rockets landed in Israel, while two were intercepted by the Iron Dome missile defense system. The Israeli army also released footage it claims shows the seizure of arms, explosives and equipment during a nighttime raid on a residential building in Gaza. Other footage showed soldiers seizing an underground rocket launcher said to be beneath the house next door to a UN-run school. However, there is still widespread international condemnation of Israel's attacks. Spain's foreign minister, Jose Garcia Margallo, called the attacks unacceptable, saying with many children among the more than 1,000 dead, it's something that moves the conscience of all humanity. Here in Hong Kong, demonstrators gathered at Southern Playground and marched to Israel's consulate in Admiralty calling for an end to the violence. The demonstrators say there's a misconception that it's a religious conflict when the attacks are politically motivated. They are still not treating other Palestinians who stayed in Palestine very well. They are not giving them their rights, so we should more focus on the human side than just stating that it's a religious conflict, because it's not. <laughs> Even in Tel Aviv's Robin Square, 3,000 people gathered to call for a peaceful resolution to the fighting. A few hundred demonstrators held a counter-protest in support of the Israeli army. More protests took place all across Europe, with people in Paris, Geneva, London and Frankfurt, all calling for an end to Israel's action. Arthur Akiola, ATV News. Relatives of the 118 people who died in Thursday's plane crash in Mali have visited the crash site to pay their respects. And North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has marked the 61st anniversary of an armistice with the South by launching more missiles. Arthur Akaola reports. North Korean state media released pictures today of the nation's leader Kim Jong-un observing a rocket-firing drill. 
The launch took place on the eve of the 61st anniversary of the Korean armistice, which ended its war with the South in 1953. The report said the drill took into account the location of U.S. bases in South Korea and simulated a battle to strike and destroy them. The exact location of the drill wasn't revealed, but the North usually fires short-range missiles off its east and west coasts. The tests have angered the United Nations, which has threatened the reclusive state with more sanctions, which Pyongyang responded to with threats of a fourth nuclear test. The pictures also showed Kim paying respects to his predecessors and watching a volleyball match. Family members of the 118 victims of Thursday's Air Algeri plane crash gathered at the airport where the ill-fated flight took off. With the government's help, some of them want to organize a day of mourning. Some of the relatives were flown out by helicopter to the site in northern Mali, where the plane went down. Burkina Faso's president, Blaise Compore, offered his condolences to the victims' families. The crash is being blamed on bad weather. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe was taken on a tour of the ancient Mexican city of Teotihuacan. The visit to the pre-Hispanic area northeast of the capital Mexico City, built between the 1st and 7th centuries, comes a day after the two sides signed bilateral accords, including a nuclear energy deal. Japan is Mexico's second largest Asian trading partner after China. Mexico is Abe's first stop on a 10-day Latin American tour. Arthur Urquiola, ATV News. Back locally, more than 100 villages living near the new border control point have threatened to take legal action against the government over the Lungshan Tunnel Works. The residents are from eight villages living near the Lenteng Heng Yunwei crossing between Hong Kong and Shenzhen. They claim the government failed to consult them about the construction, which will affect several ancestral graves and farmland. But the Civil Engineering Development Department dismissed their accusations saying it consulted local representatives several times before starting the project. Hong Kong youths who took part in the PLA summer camp graduated today after a fortnight of tough training. The 260 trainees spent the last 15 days getting to know what military life is like. Here's Win Wong. Here they are on their first day. And this is what they look like today. These are the participants of the 10th military summer camp for Hong Kong youth, co-organized by the Education Bureau and the People's Liberation Army in Hong Kong. For two weeks, these kids were taken away from the comfort of their own homes and subject to hard military training, from flag raising to martial arts and even singing. They certainly put a lot of sweat and tears into the experience. The trainees said even though the training was grueling, they have come out as better people. Practicing marching in the hot summer sun was the hardest, said this boy. I seriously thought about giving up. But overall, staff at the camp seemed satisfied with their performance. This teacher said in the beginning many trainees complained about missing home. But after a few days of getting used to life here, they got used to the routine. At today's graduation ceremony, the 260 kids showed off their skills to a panel of special guests. And now they have a certificate to show off for their hard work. Wen Wang, ATV News.